Okay, so the first thing I want to get into is privacy. So Windows 10 spies on you, right? Um, some of you guys know this. If you didn't, um, well, Windows 10 spies on you. How do you go? Uh, basically, everything you do gets sent to Microsoft, right? All your keystrokes, um, your what Windows you have open, the movies you like to watch. It sends all an MP5 hash, I think, maybe something like that. Maybe SHA1 sends some sort of hash to them, I think, and they and that good file title and probably some other information. Um, they know exactly how many photos you view on your photo viewer. They they know um they know what all of your files are. They even have the ability to remotely uninstall programs or delete files on your computer. Um, and on top of that, you can now. I know you guys are gonna say like, well, you can disable the spying right through the settings, you know. Well, yes, sort of. You can disable some of the spying through the settings, however there's still extra things that they have that you can't disable. And, you before you go say, well they can go down to the program and then that will fully turn it off, actually no, they can't. Because if you download the program it will fully turn it off, it will claim to fully turn it off, but it actually won't turn it off, God damn it, It actually won't fully turn it off. So, even though games turn up for you turn off, it won't fully turn off because it because the amount of things it blocks really, by the time it because the amount of websites it blocks, right? Um it blocks them mostly for your host file and for the firewall. Well, Microsoft have more websites than that. For example, by the time they've blocked five of them, Microsoft has probably created like twenty more for spying on you. So you know, and they even reuse some of their old services like they use, um, I believe it's something like, something like, um, Skype.com or Skype subdomains. They actually use that for spying on you as well. And it was just crazy. Alright, and, you know, so even if you turn off Windows 10 spying, it still spies on you. Alright, and another thing is they release updates that turn off your the spying settings. They turn off your settings, right? So, for example, in the Windows anniversary update, all of your settings are basically reset. And you could no longer disable Cortana, and yes, you use Group Policy Editor, which not everyone has an enterprise version of Windows, so you know, whatever. Now I know what you're gonna say next. Well, you could just go to Windows 8.1 on Windows 7. Well, yes, I could just go to Windows 8.1 on Windows 7, but um, those won't be supported anymore, any forever. And what happens when Microsoft stops supporting it? Well, they start pushing updates out, making it extremely vulnerable. Basically making this vulnerable with Windows XP eventually, and Windows 95, and Windows 98, and basically all those. So yeah, that's why I, that's one of, that's the first reason why I don't like Windows. Alright, this next point is viruses and malware. So chances are, if you're on a Windows computer, your system is infected with, vi with a virus or malware or some sort of thing like that. If you're on Windows, chances are, you're already infected with a virus. Um. But, but sir, I use an antivirus. Well, you might use an antivirus, but didn't know antiviruses are only about 20% effective, and and pretty much only 20% of malware by them is found, and everything else, well, that kind of just goes and be undetected. And a lot of time, right, a lot of time you don't even have to download a program to get infected. You can get to revisit a website, and if there's an exploit in that website, Say like I don't know Adobe Flash or Java or I don't know Unity WebKit or something like that. Um, it could have a vulnerability that yet some download and execute whatever file you want. Sometimes it's just download. If it downloads it into the correct location, when you turn on your computer, it will instantly execute it. So, um, that's one problem with Windows is there's heaps and heaps and heaps of malware, and if you're watching this on a Windows computer, you probably have malware on it right now. Um, antiviruses are not very effective at all. Um, should you use an antivirus if you run Windows? Of course, they will get some of the viruses, but I'm just saying, not very effective. Um, on Unix, however, it's extremely unlikely to get a virus. It is possible to get a virus on Unix, but it is extremely unlikely. One of the reasons is the whole permission system. The only place you can write to on Unix is, if you're a normal user, is the home folder 
and the temp folder. If you try to write to say root, I can't. Now if I try to write to root through the terminal, mkdir test permission denied. I have to run it as a as root in order to do that. And root is like the ultimate security level. Alright, and you see I had to actually enter my password in order to do that. And now I can do mkdir test. Alright, and ls. Alright, and then rm dash rf test to remove it. Okay. Okay. Um so that makes it a lot harder for someone to make malware for Linux. Because you might be like, well, you know, what's stopping someone from Linux who's just an idiot and just, you know, trusting whatever the hell they whatever the hell they try and run on their computer. Well, yeah, you could you could say that well they could social use social engineering or they could just you know target it at people who are, don't know how to use computers and they would probably install it. Yes. That would that could have that could be a reasonable way of doing it. But like I said, most of the time on Windows how you get infected is just by visiting a malicious website. Good job getting a malicious website to download onto your computer and execute without you without you entering your password to make it actually install onto your computer. Like it could download onto your computer and execute at the same time. Right? It could download and execute on your computer. And it it could execute as a normal user and it would work just fine with normal permissions. But if it tried to actually install itself, say by writing something to to slash or I mean to the root or trying to write something say to slash bin or whatever wherever it goes if it tries to like, actually install itself and make it run on startup it doesn't have permission to do that it only has permission to this folder right here which is where all my music and stuff contains so I guess I guess the most you could do is make like some sort of ransomware for, Win for Linux I guess but then again why would you target Linux when there's heaps more people on Windows and everyone there is way more likely to run the program that you, that you give them? And there's heaps of exploits available as well that you can just use. So, you know, they like to target Windows a lot more. Now, if Linux got more popular, yes, it would get more viruses and malware. Uh, naturally, um, if more people went on to Linux, they would get more people trying to target it because there would be a bigger amount of computers they could hook up to a botnet or something. Alright, so that's the second point, okay, is malware and viruses and stuff like that. You basically won't get it on Linux at all. And then the third one is open source. Everything's open, right? So if, say, if, say, Say Linux tried, try, say someone tried to make a Linux um, spy on you like Windows 10 does. Everyone would know. And the thing is, and so it would only be one distribution. Some people say Ubuntu does this for some reason. But I don't know how true that is. I just have heard that Ubuntu does that. But the um, thing is, is, everything's open source. Everyone can see the code. And there's heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of versions of Linux that are still supported and millions of distros that would be basically impossible to make it actually spy on you because someone else would just go and release a version that doesn't spy on you and everyone would use that instead because everyone on Linux is tech savvy enough to google the distribution they're about to install um, and you know get a billion results if it's the one that likes to spy on you so whatever that is alright so Linux is open source they couldn't do anything shady with Linux there's no one person who controls all of Linux <coughs> controlled by basically everyone anyone can go in and modify the code change it however they want and stuff and also Linux is free and you know it's just Linux is just way better Windows sucks and now one thing I'm gonna say is well compatibility yes compatibility is an issue it is a big issue but apart from that um if you don't plan on, if you don't game on PC, if you don't, if you're not really a gamer, um, Linux will probably be fine. If you like to play a lot of games, well, I'll just open my Steam here and I'll show you what actually works on my Steam for Linux. I mean, it's not much. 
So yeah, Unix does have problems, but Windows has way bigger problems, and I don't game on my... Unix only really has problems if you like to game on it. Everything else you can basically do. If you write Word documents, or you can use LibreOffice, and it's basically 100% compatible with Microsoft Word. You, If you like to just browse the internet and watch YouTube, well, you've got... You've got Google Chrome, you've got Firefox, you've got Chromium, you've got all of these, you've got heaps of browsers that you can use, so you can watch YouTube, just fine. Just fine on Unix. If you like to, um, if you like to play Minecraft, well, Minecraft works 100% fine on Unix. Um, but if you're really like a hardcore gamer who plays like Call of Duty and, or like, Fallout 4 or whatever, and you play some really graphics intensive games, I don't know any it's but because I mainly just play Japanese role playing games on my PlayStation, but um if you're someone who likes to play heaps of glory graphics intensive games on your PC, chances are you often won't work on won't work on Unix. So, um if you're a gamer, stick with Windows until games start moving to Unix I guess. But apart from that you are Linux is probably better in every single other sense. Another thing is, if you like to mess with the command prompt a lot, well, you've got Bash on on Unix. Bash is way better than command prompt than CMD or DXE, like way better. Also, if you want to get into hacking, you will absolutely need Unix. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching. This has been Silwalker. Goodbye.